So this week, instead of going to the grocery store, I actually just went to the farmer's market and we got all of our groceries for the week there pretty much. So I already had some stuff in the fridge like milk, some butter and some just staple items, but we're gonna be eating mostly from our fresh summer produce and some local meat. So the first thing I got was just some lettuce because if you saw my last video, you know that we pulled out a ton of lettuce from our garden. So that's pretty much done for the season. It's pretty crispy. And so I'm gonna have to wait for the fall before I plant more. So I grabbed a couple just big heads of romaine lettuce. I also picked up some purple cabbage. So I like to do this just for slaw or a nice little salad. So I like that. You can also cook it down. There's a million things you can do with cabbage. So it's a really great thing to have on hand. And then I also picked up a few different kinds of squash. So I have some crooked neck squash. I have this stripy squash, which I think is called maybe an Italian squash. I can't remember what that is called. And then I also picked up some yellow zucchini and these are all really good. I even eat these things for breakfast, delicious. We got a few of these little yellowy green peppers. These are just some bell peppers. I do have some growing in the garden, but they're not quite ready to pick yet. So I picked some of that up. And then also these little sweet banana type peppers. They're kind of like a sweet banana pepper. They're not spicy or anything. So they're good in salads or with hummus or just any type of um, cold salad like that. So I picked up some of those. I also picked up a few heirloom tomatoes. I can have these with eggs or in my salads or even just like a tomato salad. I like to keep things just light and fresh this time of year. I could put it on a sandwich. So there's a lot you could do with just heirloom tomatoes as well. And then for fruit, I picked up a few of these delicious peaches, which my kids ate about four of them in the car on the way home from the market. So we only have a few left, but I could use these in oatmeal or Greek yogurt or just, you know, different snacks for the week. So we picked up some of those. So that's all the main produce. And then I'm gonna show you some of the things that I picked up that are more like pantry staples. I picked up some apricot jam. We like to do jam on top of our oats or sometimes the kids will stir it into just like plain Greek yogurt. So I picked up some of that. And then my daughter is really into making homemade popcorn. So we picked up some of this Amish red popcorn. So we're gonna try that out. We like to do butter and our Celtic sea salt and make really good quality popcorn. The kids will have that as a snack. And then another pantry item, I don't know if this is pantry or produce, but I picked up some of these butter beans. And these are basically like lima beans. You can slow cook them. I like to do it sometimes with like bacon or ham and butter or oil and just kind of cook them down and they're really rich and delicious. So I picked up two bags of those that I can pop in the freezer. Another thing I have to get every time that I go to the farmer's market just about is flowers. I love to just pick up a little bouquet of flowers and I'll make little arrangements and put them around the house and it's just such a bright spot. So I love to do that. If I'm not growing flowers in the garden, then I'll pick up some from the farmer's market. So I already have a lot of pantry staples. Like I have big bags of grain and I have rice and things like that. So I don't really need to buy those very often, but what I do need to buy that I don't have stocked right now in my freezer is meat. So I picked up a couple of these local pork chops. These are just really good and easy to cook. They are kind of like a chicken breast. You can do a million different things with them. They're really versatile. They're just boneless, skinless. So I picked up some of those. And then I also picked up some of these mild Italian sausages. So these could be used for breakfast or dinner. You could do it with pasta or on the grill. So another super versatile meat item that I like to keep on hand. So I picked up some of those. I picked up some mild breakfast sausage. This is just regular pork sausage. I like to use this. Sometimes I'll use grass fed ground beef, but a lot of these meats you can kind of do the same thing with. So sometimes I'll just buy the better priced one. So that's what I did this week. I bought this instead of ground beef. And so I'll just kind of alternate back and forth and do what fits the budget. Another thing that I've been picking up lately is raw milk, but we got there too late today. And so they were already out, but I usually have that and I'll stock up on butter and cheeses. Those are like the main staples in our house. So if you guys enjoy this kind of grocery haul from the farmer's market and shopping local farmers, then make sure you hit subscribe because I'll have tons of cooking and videos just like this to help you guys learn how to shop more local and eat from your garden and cook meals that are just really whole and nourishing.
And something that I don't buy at my farmer's market are eggs because my mom has a lot of chickens and so we get all of our eggs from her. But if I didn't get my eggs from her, I would definitely be interested in buying them from my local farmers. You want to put one in? Today my older two kids are preoccupied, so I'm gonna go ahead and spend some time in my kitchen this afternoon and do a little bit of batch cooking for some of the things that I picked up this week. So today I'm gonna be making two different meals at the same time. So the first one I'm gonna be making is a soup and I'm gonna be using this pork sausage that I picked up along with a pepper. You can use just bell peppers or sweet peppers, whatever peppers you have on hand, fine. And then I've got two cans of great northern beans and I'm gonna be using that along with a little bit of chicken stock. And I didn't have any homemade stock so I just picked up an organic one. And then we're also gonna be using some tomato paste and this is gonna make it really rich in a delicious kind of almost like a minestrone soup. I love just throwing together a soup and putting it in the fridge for the next day for lunch or for dinner and this one especially you can use mostly pantry ingredients with just a few fresh vegetables that you have on hand. And so I'm just taking this pepper that I am chopping up really finely. And I think that's kind of the key to good soup is if you're not pureeing it, chop everything as finely as you can. I didn't realize at the time, but this was actually a spicy pepper. And so I'm really glad that I took the time to at least remove the seeds because if you're using a pepper that's spicy, you definitely want to scrape out that ribbing and all of the seeds that are inside and that'll help it to be a little more mild. But if you're using something like a bell pepper, then it's already going to be mild. But if you're using spicy, make sure you get those seeds out. And then I'm just going to chop up one sweet onion. I love like yellow onions, sweet onions, Vidalia onions, all of those are fine. And so I'm just gonna peel the outside and I cut it in half. And then I wanna chop this really finely too, like the bell pepper behind it. And so I'm making little slices one way and then I'm gonna make two incisions going horizontally the other way and then I dice it finely. And this just makes it really, really fine and makes it kind of just like marry into the soup a lot better. I know during this time of year, you don't really usually think about making soup, but I love just a big pot of hearty vegetable filled soup and it gets better. So if you put it in the fridge one day, you already have lunch the next day and it's just loaded with all those fresh produce from the garden or the market and it's just delicious. So if you don't make a lot of soups, don't be afraid to do it, especially if you serve it with a side salad, which I love to do. Okay, so I have all my ingredients prepped here for my soup. And now while that is gonna get going in this pot, in this little pan right in here, I'm gonna use some of my butter beans that I picked up. So I have two packages of these that came frozen at the farmer's market and I'm gonna use these along with a little bit of bacon that I have left from this week. And I'm also gonna throw in an heirloom tomato, just kind of like fresh at the end. And it's kind of gonna be like a really simple version of a succotash. If you feel intimidated by cooking multiple meals at one time, don't because honestly, you're just using your time better, but it's really not that much more difficult at all. So all I'm gonna do is get my two pans going and so I'll start them at the same time. So I'll have one pan going with my bacon and I'm gonna have my other pot going with my sausage. So essentially, I'm just gonna brown my meats both at the same time. And this helps me kind of stay focused and on task. And then while those are simmering, or not simmering, while those are sauteing and browning, then I can go ahead and focus on 
other things like vegetables and adding those to the pot. So in my soup pot, I'm adding in my peppers and my onions now, and we're just gonna let those kind of saute while our bacon is still going. And you always wanna make sure that you add plenty of salt even while they're just cooking down because you want to flavor as you go. So add salt and pepper or at least salt to every step of the way. I know that sounds like a really basic tip, but if you want your food to taste good, you have to use plenty of salt. So my bacon is rendered down and it's nice and crispy now. And so I'm gonna remove that and put that on a plate and I'm gonna leave all those bacon drippings in my skillet because that's gonna be the flavor and the fat that we're gonna cook down these butter beans. So I'm gonna go ahead and move that onto my plate and just set that to the side. And you can do the same kind of recipe with butter beans or lima beans. You can use them pretty interchangeably. And if you can't find them fresh, like you can usually at farmer's markets, you can definitely find them in your frozen section at your grocery store. So next I'm just adding in my can of tomato paste here and I like to kind of let it saute and cook out some of that canned taste that sometimes you'll taste with tomatoes. You kind of need to let it saute, get some of that flavor cooked out. And then I'm gonna add in my chicken broth. And I like to do a little bit of chicken broth at a time until I get the right consistency. So I try to never just dump in the whole carton or like a whole amount in a measuring cup. I try to do it as I go so I can really see how thin or thick I want my soup to be. If you're looking to make meals for the family that are still healthy but a little more frugal, I like adding things like beans and extra veggies to it because instead of just using two pounds of ground beef for your family size, you can use one and then you can add things to it like beans or rice, like whole brown rice or just more vegetables. So I like to kind of stretch my meals that way versus like just always doing boxes of pasta or things that are a little bit more processed. And so that's what I'm doing here. I'm using one pound of pork sausage and then I'm adding in beans and more vegetables to kind of stretch it out and make it a more filling and healthy recipe. These first of the season tomatoes I've been getting at the farmer's market are so good. They are as good as they look. And I just noticed in my own backyard that my heirloom tomatoes are starting to turn red now. So hopefully I'll be getting my own pretty soon. But these just taste nothing like the grocery store. I used to think I didn't like tomatoes and then I had a homegrown tomato and it changed everything. So now I actually like them. I'll eat them raw, I'll eat them in dishes. They're so good and they taste completely different. So if anything, go to your farmer's market and pick up a local tomato because it may just change your life. So on the one side, I have my soup simmering and then I have my butter beans that I'm adding in my bacon back into it and I'm adding in that heirloom tomato that I chopped up and I'm just doing this right at the end. So they're nice and soft now. I let them simmer with a little bit of chicken broth and then I added in the bacon and the tomato right at the end so that they wouldn't cook a whole bunch more. They'll just kind of mix in together and flavor everything and that dish is ready to go. So now to finish off the soup, I just had a little bit of herbs left. I just threw in some rosemary and some basil and maybe just a little bit of oregano but I just threw those in just to add a little more flavor, a little more interest to the soup, but it's definitely optional. I hope you enjoyed today's video and you can check out my other ones.